forced by the Indian Army within moments of reports that police had shot down dozens of unarmed civilians in Srinagar. As troops patrolled the streets, there was no sign of the city's 800,000 people waiting in their houses behind locked doors. When the curfew was lifted, tension was near breaking point. The apparent massacre of civilians by armed police happened in this street. Graves have been dug for these civilian victims 100 yards from the massacre at what Kashmir is called Martyr Cemetery. This old woman's husband was among the dead. 150,000 Hindus from the Kashmir Valley have fled, with Muslim militants unyielding in their demand for independence from India, years of bloodshed lie ahead. In the part of Kashmir ruled by Muslim Pakistan lie training camps for the militants. With Pakistan's sanction, the Kashmiri guerrillas are infiltrated back to Indian Kashmir. You say the Indians shoot people indiscriminately but what about yourselves don't you kill people as well no we are not killing we are killing sometimes but we are killing the persons who are the agents of india you kill informers agents. informers yes certainly but those are kashmiris they might be sometimes then they are not the one tragedy of kashmir in the past year is the militarization and brutalization of the valley there are weapons circulating at every level of society. The Pakistanis, the suppliers, have a lot to answer for. India is in control of the valley, but it has lost the allegiance of its people. The damaging testimony of 40 wounded survivors of the Srinagar police shooting is a serious setback to India's faltering campaign to win over hearts and minds had been killed since India cracked down on Muslim separatists there 18 months ago. It's been a dirty war, with Indian troops accused of atrocities against civilians, 16 allegedly shot dead last month in the Kashmiri capital, Srinagar. With the spring thaw in the mountains, separatist guerrillas are again crossing the so-called line of control from the Pakistani part of Kashmir, Azad Kashmir. Alex Thompson of ITN's Channel 4 News reports from the border. The Kashmir Valley Two years of fighting for independence from India by five different guerrilla groups have left it virtually a police state under curfew. The only way to reach some of the areas of heaviest guerrilla activity close to the frontier with Pakistan is by helicopter, for the entire valley is surrounded by some of the world's highest terrain, crossed by the guerrillas. So ITN was given the first opportunity to film India's most sensitive frontier, the area where 73 rebels died last month as they crossed from Pakistan. They moved perilously close to this high-altitude observation post. The Indian army was prepared and waiting. Once the insurgents come over the passes from Pakistan, they enter this region, where there's a system of deep gullies down which they traverse to high meadows. All the way along, it's a question of hide-and-seek with the Indian forces who are stationed up here right the way through the depths of the winter. And on the streets of Srinagar, Kashmir's main town, soldiers patrol constantly. In the bazaars, they're shooting almost every day. When the army needs to get money from the main bank in order to pay its own soldiers, a huge show of force is necessary. The tension repeatedly boils over. Indian troops opened fire last month at a funeral at this cemetery in Srinagar. Sixteen people died. Some eyewitnesses are still too frightened to be identified. I was the eyewitness. I was lying there. You, and you can see this feathering. People tried to escape, but due to the feathering, they could not jump. Some jumped. The people who jumped were shot dead on the spot. The authorities agree their soldiers overreacted, but say they were provoked. Nobody doubts that most people in the Kashmir Valley support the rebels, though one group demanding that the UN and Amnesty International investigate allegations of Indian Army brutality has widened its tactics. Two months ago, one group, the MJF, kidnapped two Swedish engineers based here in the west of the state. We made contact with the rebels and were paddled through the lakes of Kashmir. When our guides were sure we had no idea where we were, 
we were shown into a house to meet the military commanders of the MJF, demanding that the West take notice of their fight. Everybody must remember how much Indian government and Indian forces are committing atrocities here. Other guerrilla leaders we met expressed disgust at the kidnapping, saying it was counterproductive. You know that the two hostages remain trapped by the impasse between the rebels and the Indian government, a government not about to yield to the gun. India will not be the same if uh, something goes wrong in Kashmir. Our stakes are very high here and there is no way that we will yield on this issue. But the rebels have begun another season of fighting. Their cemeteries that pockmark the beauty of this Himalayan valley look certain to expand 